St. Mary's College, Biz Ed 136, Investments, DTC, New Product Development Presentation, uh, Take 8, Team 7, and Action. So we're derivative trade port. We have a mixed cap diversified portfolio of technology, finance, and services, and utilities. I'm Jacob Casillas. I'm Rob Cerrone. I'm Ryan Anderson. So our recommendation, we recommend DTC launch a series of retail and institutional large cap portfolio products. We target moderate risk and moderate high returns of 12% to 15% over the total holding period. Targeted investor segments are institutional at 1.25 billion, the retail clients at 1.25 billion, totaling 2.5 billion AUM portfolio within the next five years. With our fee structure of 1 to 3% AUM, we expect to generate total annual gross fee revenue of 137.5 million. So our presentation outline, we're gonna go over the sector allocation of major holdings, Target market, portfolio performance, technical analysis, and back to our recommendation. So our portfolio overview. So for our passive, it's 49% technology, 9% utilities, 36% financial services, and 6% real estate. For our active portfolio, 40.2% technology, 19.4% utilities, 33.6% financial services, and 6.8% real estate. And for our target portfolio, 33.2% technology, 26.2% utilities, 19.2% financial services, and 21.4% real estate. Our largest holdings for passive are uh, Apple, Visa, Intel, Verizon, and MasterCard. For active, MasterCard, First Republic, Bank, VMware, Verizon, and Unitel Energy. And Target, BRT, Exelon, Apple, Intel, and Visa. So for our target market, it's a 50-50 split, target of 2.5 billion per portfolio within five years. Our desired holding periods of five plus years for services and 15 plus for institutional. And we're targeting investors desiring stable long-term returns, for example, 401ks, ETFs, and IRAs. So our fee structure for the target was 2.5% AUM for assets under management with a fee of 2.5, which our fee revenue Passive portfolio has our expected, re expected return of 12%, 12 to 15%, and our beta is 0.9 with 538 For the active, it has our expected return of 12 to 16%, and our beta was 0.4, and has 400 to 600 basis points. And then for the target, 10 to 13%, and our beta is 0.6. So we did a fundamental analysis valuation using an opportunity going to growth, multiple and DCF approaches, to find our intrinsic valuations and find whether it was at a premium or discount based on intrinsic value versus the current price. And we had 11, uh, 17 buy recommendations and a sell. And we aggregated the weight uh, by whether it is a, at a high premium versus it the stock's beta. And so these are the key ratios for all our stocks in the portfolio. Uh, this is our technical analysis. When the 10 crosses the 50, that's your alert. When the 10 crosses the 30, that's your signal to either buy or sell the stock. And this is the results of said analysis. We averaged 13.9 million per year, giving us a total return of 41.9 million for our portfolio. Uh, our recommendation is we recommend DTC launch a series of retail institutional large cap portfolio products. We, ta we target moderate risk and moderate high returns of 12 to 15% over the total holding period. Targeted investor segments are institutional, 1.25 billion, and retail clients, 1.25 billion, totaling a 2.5 billion assets under management portfolio within the next five years. With our fee structure of one to 3% AUM, we expect to generate total annual gross fee revenue of $137.5 million. This is Eleanor Anderson, our Global Portfolio Manager, Rob Tarani, our Senior Associate Global Equity Analyst, and I'm Jacob Casais, our Senior Global Equity Analyst. Go back to the recommendations slide. This just doesn't, you guys gotta be careful because 
one percent, three percent on two point five doesn't come out to one thirty seven. Okay. So you got they can do the math on that. So it's inconsistent. Yeah, it's one zero two. This is your this is your target, right? And that's your total. Yeah, for the three. Right? Each one is two point five. One has a one, and one has a two. Yeah, I'm just saying this is the total, right? So it doesn't make this doesn't that, the math isn't there. So you gotta you gotta say that this is the target, and this is all three. Does that make sense? And then go back to the fundamental analysis. Uh, this one or this one? This one. So here, this is the, here's the fundamental. Excuse me. Your, your premium discounts for it. Perfect. So on these, this, this 250, so is this a small cap or something like that? Uh, that's a read, so there's no way. That's a that's a read stock. There's no way that the stock price could go up 250 percent. So should we wait one of the? Well, no. You, you got to go back. You got to go back when you do the fundamental analysis. Hold on a second. When you do the fundamental analysis, uh, you got to go back and you got to set the multiples. Okay. So for each of the individual stocks, you know, like the peer group or within the sector, right? the expected returns eight, nine, ten. That's that's not a problem. Okay. That's just an expected return that you put in there. It's going to be in your your uh, <coughs> your earnings per share, or you know, if you're doing REITs, you're going to be using FFO per share, um, unless they're REOX, real estate operating companies, then you can use your earnings per share. Um, so you got to kind of dig in there, or you're also going to get these wide spreads because you're basically not applying the correct multiples, and you're not applying the either the correct cash flows or the growth. Yeah, you use FFO multiples for the reads. <coughs> you use only uh, PE multiples for established, you know, industry companies. And you're probably going to use higher PE multiples for tech companies. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have uh, very high earnings or you know zero earnings or negative earnings because they're a tech company, then you got to use EBITDA per share. You got to use a, some kind of free cash flow metric. Mm -hmm. And then these along, this will all come out of our 